Here on the Renault stand, we're going to look at some of the interesting concept cars they've got here today and have a brief chat with their design director to find out a bit more about them. Well, there's a lot to say about the concept cars. Actually, everything started um, in Paris last year, in 2010, and, of course, with the arrival of the new head of uh, Renault Design, Lawrence van der Naka. Um, and we had uh, um, a lot of uh, brainstorming at the beginning to think about the real life circle about these concept cars, a new series of concept cars. It started with a very emotional car, the Red uh, Desire, we showed in Paris, then Capture, which is this car. So at the beginning we thought, well, it's a, it's a car for falling in love, uh, which was this year. And then you explore the life, and that is Capture, that is small SUV, which Renault hasn't done so far yet. And um, which is, I think, striking. It's very athletic. It's uh, very sporty. I mean, you, you have the feeling the car is jumping already when, when, it, when it's on, on stand. What was your inspiration for the design? Inspiration? Well, first of all, we thought that really Renault has to become much more emotional than before. Uh, I mean, I tried before I was head of the, the Renault Sport range, so we did the Megane Trophy racing car. And, um, well, so Renault has to become more emotional. And that comes by more essential, uh, more, more developed forms. And um, so I think some, some round forms you will see again, very sculptured. Actually, we work this car with these cars like sculptures. Okay. Understand. Now, presumably, you've got to work very closely with tyre manufacturers like Michelin to get the tyres to complement these incredible 22-inch wheels. That's true, yeah. yeah, yeah. We have a, a link with Michelin and they're doing a great job uh, for our concept car tyres. And so here, that's a kind of a new idea to, well, it's almost a bit like a caricature, huh? so uh, to enlarge the wheel even bigger. So the theme of, of the, the magnesium wheel, I mean, it goes over the tire, over the... Uh, and uh, I think, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very strong visual uh, effect. Looking inside the car, it's hard not to be impressed because I've never seen anything like it. The, the detailing is extremely clever, down to the little orange seatbelt releases and this incredible sprung seat. Are they comfortable? <laughs> they are comfortable and uh, well actually inspiration come, uh, came by uh, shoe design, by our uh, design in, in sports equipment. If you think about uh, equipment for mountain, for hiking, uh, but also for have a look to a hobby cat, a sailing boat, and well you will see, will see these kind of, of strings I'd say. And uh, because we wanted to express something of course quite spectacular, what is comfortable and very lightweight. So there's there's some some true reason behind because I think we all agree that the cars are a little bit too heavy nowadays. Of course, you've got this really unusual floor covering too. That looks very very hard wearing, utilitarian actually. Well, we take inspiration from everywhere, uh, and uh, if it comes from uh, utility vehicles, why not? Why not? I mean, this is a car to to go outside uh, for a car to have some adventure with. So, uh, I mean, no problem with that. It looks fun, and it's also got quite a powerful engine. I, I realize it's a small engine, but it's got a yeah. massive torque figure. Hasn't yeah, it? exactly. I mean, it's a new generation of petrol engines. Uh, so we are not only in battery cars and diesel cars, but also in petrol engines. And so it's a 1.6 liter uh, twin turbo engine with 160 horsepower and as you mentioned very torquey and uh, so well a new generation of engine which will come in a production car. And how does this mechanism work you know the, the, the roof the sills and everything else because presumably this flips down as the doors come up. Yeah that's a little well, you could say it's a gadget huh? but uh, why not I mean um, and you say I mean it's comfortable you see you can sit on it. Yeah, I've got so, an extra seat. <laughs> you've got an extra seat yeah why not. This is a car that makes you want to learn a little bit more every time. I'm fascinated by what these two push buttons actually do. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, at the moment we don't have the, the electricity, electricity who activates that, but the idea is that you, you push here and then it comes out, so you can pull out, uh, well, your friends maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And then this opens. Uh -huh. So it's a very nice movement also, which gives you access to, well, to load your... It's very, very fluid, things. isn't it? I see. And it's so a spectacular it's view also here. It is quite amazing. It's, uh, I have to admit, it, it's spectacular. It really is. It's like another dimension. And again, you've got these 
yeah, really, we're, really we're not, unusual lights. We're, we're, it's kind well. of a tunnel effect, you know, here. I mean, you can put your hand in and there's some lights inside. and So that's also quite spectacular. It must be really difficult to clean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, it's nice to clean, clean this kind of car. I it's, mean. it's so unusual, it really is. <laughs> May we take a look at the uh, R space, R -space well? sure, yeah. Now, this is the Renault R space, which presumably is a, a family concept. Yeah. What's the general sort of feeling, the design for this car? What's, what's the influence? Well, again? as you know, I mean, we have a long history in family cars. I mean, <laughs> Espace, Scenic, um, even uh, the uh, Twingo, I think, uh, Monospace, I uh, would consider as a small family car. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was sure we have to make something around that theme. And, uh, well, we wanted to show that even uh, a family car can look very sporty, very sexy in a way. Uh, so it's a very sculptured object, uh, very fluid, and but in the interior we have something very Renault, I think, uh, some, a, a real surprise. Renault have always been famous for sort of interesting interiors, comfortable interiors and so on, and I think this one isn't going to disappoint me. <laughs> no, it won't disappoint you. Maybe we'll have a look to the interior? Of course. Mm -hmm. So Axel, what's the surprise? The surprise? You want to show the surprise? Okay, well, here we have the surprise. I mean, it's a rear area which is really made for the kids. I mean, they love it. You know? And they can activate these cubes. There's always a little electric motor under each cube and to sh change the configuration of this bench seat. Huh? So it could be, well, at the beginning you saw uh, a plain bench. Then this is a kind of a two-seater configuration. And then here you see, I mean, on one side it raises up. Though that could be for a smaller child, quite ideal. And uh, we have something else after that, which is just a playground. Huh? When the car is uh, parking somewhere, uh, you can press the button again, and it just becomes something like that, uh, which includes also the boot. So it's a playground, nothing else. But I can tell you, I mean, the kids just love it. Huh? And that's a real change from before, because uh, we really separated a little bit the areas. I mean, you have this, I would say, the parental area in front, which is very essential, very much in line with the other concept cars. Yes. And then you have this rear area, which is a playground for the kids. How did you come up with the idea for the moving blocks? Because that's so unusual. It's a good question. How did we come? Well, I mean, it's probably started with a, a, a small little sketch and a, a joke and a, how about cubes? Or cubes? Why cubes? Yeah, but they could move. And I mean, everyone has played with Lego in his past, so maybe. I, I, actually, I can't really tell you, but <laughs> it, someone came up with and I said, wow, I mean, Lawrence, when you showed it to him, said, actually, I was a little bit afraid uh, because of the technical problems we might uh, learn about. And he said, no, 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 you have to do that. That is really good. It's brave as well, I think. It was a little bit brave. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. And we had some, some difficult moments, too, because it actually, in terms of uh, uh, logistics behind, it's, it's, it's quite something. I can understand that. And moving to the front of the car, again, very spacious, looks extremely comfortable, but very, very space age as well. I mean, this is an unusual interior. It, it's sparse, but it's quite inviting at the same it's, time. It's unusual, I think. Also, you might notice the center console. Yes. Also, that's kind of new for Renault because, I mean, we always made this, this dashboards who are very clean, uh, give a lot of space, but for me, it was always a little bit too equal for, 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 for the driver, for the passenger. So I think the driver, which is the owner, which is the one who buys the car, I think, uh, he deserves a little bit something special, uh, something unique. So that's, we showed it first with Desir, and, but also with a family car. I think this kind of floating center console is something very, very interesting because you keep this airy feeling at the same time. I mean, yes, there is something which also in terms of ergonomics works perfectly for the driver. It's not at all like a traditional car, is it? It's a complete departure. And I, I rather like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, well, in a way it's a tool because it works for the family. I mean, uh, this kind of car I think would perfectly work for a family. And actually there was a lot of positive echo from, from people who saw the car in Geneva. And um, so hopefully we'll see something like that for the future scenic. Or, uh, well, actually, talking about the echo, I've just realized you've echoed the design of the cubes in the back door as well, which is 
It's quite clear, I've just noticed the way those cubes are stepping to match the rest. Yeah, true. Yeah, when you close the door, you know, I mean, it just becomes one part with this bench seat, so it's more integrated, that's why. Absolutely. Um, and I'd like now to look at your other concept. Yeah, let's may. look to the Frenzy, the, our latest baby. Now, uh, this is the Renault Frenzy. Amazing. <laughs> a, wood, a wooden floor, that's the a, that's a, that's a first in a car that I can remember for a very long time. <laughs> Well, it's uh, the fourth car in, in this uh, saga of, of new concept cars. And uh, well, after having had the pleasure exploring and the family experience, well, you have to work in life. And this is a car to, to work with. I mean, we imagine that something, some, for someone who's working on freelance, mm -hmm. and uh, he uses this car, he's producing honey and using the car to, to deliver the, the honey to his customers. And, uh, but at the same time, he will use the car for his family. So, but first of all, it has to work perfectly for his work. So, extremely ergonomic here. And uh, again, this floating console. And then you have this playbook, the latest from Blackberry, mm -hmm. which is communicating with a huge exterior screen uh, on the car. And right. that's uh, something new. So here, well, everything you put in here in your Blackberry, you can show on the exterior of the car, which could be your advertising, of course. Yes. It could be, uh, well, this week I will be in this and that uh, village, for example. Or it could be uh, an ad for Renault, because this is an electric car, so why not uh, taking some money from Renault so they show an advertising. So a, movi a moving billboard? <laughs> it's a moving billboard, absolutely. Really it was meant to be that. And I think it shows really a, a strong uh, trend, uh, uh, we, we notice, that uh, more and more people well, work on freelance and uh, they need a car which works perfectly for their work, but also for their family life. It's a very clean design, I have to admit. The, again, this, this concept, uh, that's coming through from your uh, other model as I well. I think so, it? yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, this floating console we showed before, but still, we, 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 obviously, we are very, very much in love with it. So we thought, why, why not taking it again? And uh, I mean, it's just perfect to integrate the BlackBerry here. Yes. And then the dashboard you have, that's actually also quite, quite clever. I mean, uh, in these nozzles here, you actually can put some accessories you can buy. I mean, this is a drinking bottle. Okay. Uh, this is just a hook, so you can hook on things. This is a little uh, storage place. So that could be anything you can imagine. That's a really you know? clever idea, I have to admit never seen anything like that either and you've got all the controls basically grouped at yeah the I mean it's an electric car so you don't have a gear shift anymore I mean it's just forward backwards yep. so well the warning and then the heating controls here and that here gives you information uh, again about your uh, daily journey and uh, about the uh, electric uh, the technical information about the car I understand inside the car obviously quite a versatile load area yeah. um, and again you've got this floor design echoed on the back of the seats. Yeah, yeah, well, first of all, about the materials, we wanted to have, I mean, you, you saw, I mean, the, the, the cockpit around the driver is actually quite futuristic and uh, high technology, etc. And here we wanted to have uh, some, uh, the warmth, you know, a very warm feeling. So this is a bench seat, it's a rather usual uh, bench seat you can fold up and then uh, the kids could sit here and uh, they actually have a drawing board on this side. Um, so uh, lots of fun of course they have here another screen so they can play with that uh, but very warm materials very welcome and uh, the, uh, la uh, the, the um, package here actually they hold in place by magnets that's also new so you don't have the rails and all it these bits and pieces no it won't move around huh? but it, I have to push and then but it sticks in place and you got this very Again, the concept of the suicide doors, very, very good load area, no B post to get in the way. Yeah, I mean, that's the dream of every designer at the moment, I mean, to, to get rid of the B posts. Yes. Uh, so we're, we're thinking about that too. Yeah. How many of the concept cars do you think will actually make their way through to the, <laughs> the show? Obviously not in the original form. But. I hope a lot. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's first of all, it's, it's show, uh, showing ideas, these concept cars. Uh, but you might have noticed that, for example, the front end design, this new front end design we found through Desir, found its way to Zoe Preview or to the next Zoe or to the Twingo, which you see here. Huh? So yes. uh, they're, they're there are things, and well, you, the Desire, we're thinking about a Desire sports car at the moment, but I, well, I can't really tell you more. 
You also have this interesting little logo on the side of the car. You know the circles, the one I mean? Yeah, well that explains this little circle on, on each car. That explains you uh, this, uh, this uh, strategy in design we developed and um, where, where the car is positioned. Huh? I mean, it started with falling in love, explore, yes. a family and work and it will continue. Thank you so much for your time. You're very welcome. Thank you very much for coming.